Welcome back to the Mobile and Park series. This is actually part nine of the series. So thank you for staying this long. And in today's episode, I wanna talk about the difference between apartment complexes and mobile home parks. So a lot of people, myself included, I started off in single family homes. I went to apartments. Once you're in apartments, you're always thinking, oh, how about mobile home parks? Right? That's kind of the next natural progression because you always hear, oh, I heard it's more passive. It's tenant owned homes and you can make a lot of money. There's a lot of cash flow. Um, a lot of um, forced appreciation and you can do big cash out refinances. And kind of from my experience, you know, to, to remind you guys, I have uh, two apartment complexes around 46 units and then I own a 200 lot distra highly distressed Valley at Mobile Park in Alabama. So I own both and I got both around the same time. And so I kind of have perspective on each. And to be honest, like right now, I spend 80% of my time and effort, money, effort and time on the Mobile Park. And then I spend 20% of my time on my apartment complexes. So for apartments, it's pretty simple, right? Like <clears throat> you take, you buy the apartment and then you just renovate it. You know, usually you get it bidded out. So, you know, I'm renovating, I think I renovated like 20 units in the past year. And it's roughly around 7,000 to $10,000. Um, if it's a more, uh, for a larger renovation, like new kitchen and whatnot, new bathroom, but if it's just like a turnaround project, maybe around $2,000. Uh, if you're just doing basic turns to make it look um, nice and clean. And then um, from there, it's pretty simple, right? You just have a renovation crew and they just renovate, you know, one to two units per month, right? You know, usually not much turnover. Um, you know, you might go over cost a little bit. It might take longer, um, which is normal. Uh, getting supplies is a lot easier for apartments. You know, you can go to Home Depot, you can go to Lowe's, um, you can go on Amazon. And they have a lot of stuff there that you can get. So if you need more of something, it's easy. Just drive over there, get it. You don't have to get shipped. Um, and, you know, with apartments, uh, property management is, you know, a lot easier. There's a lot more options. Um, oops, I kind of skipped the topic. So for renovations for apartments, it's a lot simpler. It's easy to get the supplies of mobile home parks. Um, the supplies, it, it's very niche. So you might be lucky in Home Depot and... Uh, Lowe's might have it, but for some stuff, you might have to order it customized and get it shipped over to you. Like skirting, like skirting doesn't come from like Home Depot. You have to like order it, it as it come over to you. So it might take like, you know, f four to six weeks for that to come, uh, depending on where it's shipping from. And there's a lot of shipping delays, especially during COVID. So let's say you need a new window for your mobile home park, uh, for mobile home. Like it might take a while to get it shipped over there. So you have to like board it up temporarily, put a tarp over it uh, until that window gets shipped and then you rip off the board and put the window in, right? So there's, it's hard to get the supplies. It's very specialized. Um, not, you can't just pick it up at Home Depot. Um, in, in terms of the uh, general contractors, you know, obviously there's a lot more options for, um, you know, apartments versus mobile home parks. Mobile home parks, uh, fixing mobile homes is very niche. So you usually get to get people who fix up mobile homes only so they know what they're doing. Uh, like just because you can renovate an apartment complex doesn't mean you can renovate a mobile home park. It's, it's different, but usually people who can renovate mobile home parks or mobile homes can renovate apartments, right? Not vice versa. Um, and, you know, uh, with mobile home renovators, you know, typically they, at least in the Southeast, in Alabama, they, they want to be paid on an hourly basis versus in, you know, apartments, it's very common. You just bid for a job and you pay per bid. So when you're dealing with hourly workers, they're not as motivated. Um, you know, they may not work as fast um, and there's gonna be a lot of turnover because they'll just get a job somewhere else, right? So there's a, I, I dealt with a lot more turnover with my mobile home park versus my apartment complex. Like, like I said, I still have my same general contractors for both my apartment complexes, but for my mobile home park, I had like five people in the span of like a year. Um, another thing too is uh, I guess going back to the property management, I mean, there's a lot of options uh, for property management um, for apartments, right? Like I have like a Rolodex of like 10 people because I always advocate for backups of backups of backups. You know, if you watch my videos or if you're part of my course, I, I'm a big advocate of that. And for the mobile home park space, there's not many third-party operators. I can't just like call the apartment complex operator in Alabama and be like, hey, uh, can you can you do third party management for mobile home park? It's a different animal, it's a different beast. Um, so there's very few, many that are great. 
Um, even fewer, most of them that are there are like, okay, for the most part, like I would describe my property management as okay. You know, like they do what they do. They could be better, but you're kind of stuck, right? So you're stuck with fewer options. Um, in terms of like capital, I'd say uh, mobile home parks is way more capital, right? Like it, it, it's to fix up a mobile home. It's like, you know, 10 to 12,000. Um, and just having a lot of the fixed expenses of owning 55 acres is expensive, right? Like my apartment complex sits on like what, like one, one to two acres. And there's not much grass in one to two acres versus 55 acres. You have way more grass. So when you're mowing that, you have to pay someone full time to mow my 55 acres versus my apartment complex. You know, I, I just can pay a landscaping company or just pay one of my tenants that are there, you know, just to mow the lawn every two weeks. Um, so there's less fixed expenses, right? With, with apartments, my on-site, my property manager doesn't live there, right? They don't live in a unit on my mobile home park. My on-site needs to live there, right? Because they need to be available and all that um, for them. Um, for the, you know, apartment as well, um, you know, it's hard to add more units, right? Like I can't, like my 26 unit, it's not really easy for me to add like another, like, oh, I'm gonna add another four units right next door or right next to it. But with mobile homes, like, you know, I can bring in like a bunch of new homes, 100% financed, right? And then either sell it or rent it out, right? Like, no, you can't do that with apartments. Mobile homes, I could literally bring in a brand new, I mean, I brought in two brand new, three bedroom, two bath, single wides for $45,000 all in or $40,000 all in, 100% finance. And at that point, I could either sell it or I can rent it out, right? So I do both. Like, I'm, I rent them out, it's faster, but I, I can sell some too, right? Or I, I try to get a tenant in there, rent it out, and then I'll sell it to them, right? Like, that's kind of my angle. So, you know, only mobile home parks can I bring in a home that's $45,000 that's built from scratch in four weeks, throw it in there, set the utilities, and it's like ready in eight months, eight weeks total, right? And now you can rent it out. So, like I said, I, I have about maybe, I think around like close to 50 out of 200 of those lots occupied and 150 are vacant so i can just bring in these new homes set them up sell it or rent it out right so you can do that pretty fast right i can order i could literally order like 10 homes a month if i have infrastructure to like set them all up and then rent them out immediately right get a wait list rent them out or get buyers pre-approved and they'll want to buy so if you build your systems you can really scale rapidly with that versus apartments you can't really so um there's that um I will say that with apartments, I think it's a lot more friendly towards like smaller operators like myself. Like for me, I, I own my two apartments about partners um, myself while working full time. And I also own my mobile home park about partners working full time managing myself. Right. And I will say like time commitment wise, uh, apartments a lot less um, versus mobile home park. The time commitment is a lot more. Right. Like I spend 80% of my time over there my mobile home park and 20% of my apartments. So if you just want to build a nice portfolio or working full time, you know, apartments a lot easier, less time, a little bit less stress because you're spending less money. Um, and like I said, kind of less points for failure. Um, so with mobile home parks, obviously you can force a lot of appreciation. Um, you know, with, with forced appreciation, uh, like you said, for example, if my mobile park was 100% filled with 200 lots, is it worth 10 million? Like my apartment complex, it's not going to be worth ten million, you know. You know now if I got like a you know two hundred unit mobile par or apartment complex, it might be, but you know you can force a lot of appreciation. You, know, you seller finance is a lot more common in the mobile home park space um, because usually there's bad financing options in the past. You know, it's, it's more now, but they're kind of used to the mom and pop are used to selling it to seller finance. They probably bought it at seller finance, so they're they're more used to that. So it's definitely nicer and they're more used to being creative with that. Um, with mobile home parks, you know, obviously if you're going the tenant owned home model, um, it's a lot more passive or it could be more cheaper in terms of the expense ratio. It's 35% for the uh, mobile tenant owned model. Uh, for the apartment complex, it's about 50, 55%. And honestly, for a park owned home model, it's about 55 to 60% uh, expense ratio there. So it, the expenses actually could be more. Um, if you do the park owned home model. So, you know, like overall, there's, there's a lot of pros and cons between each. Um, you know, for me, 
if I were to do, like, I can see myself doing apartments for a long time. I think for mobile home parks, um, you know, for if you just want to own one or two mobile home parks, I think your best bet is to get like a tenant owned home model, right? It's a lot less moving pieces, a little more passive uh, expense. It's a little bit more uh, predictable there. And then like your value add is just slowly raising the rent. So just buying something like almost like turnkey for the most part, maybe you can infill a couple homes here and there. Um, but it's just getting that lot rent, hiring a property manager that's, that lives there. They just collect the rent and just keep it very simple. You may not be able to force as much appreciation, uh, but just buying something turnkey, you know, it's like very passive in that end. I think I would do that, but I didn't need to save a lot of money to do that. Right. Cause those are going to be like, you know, five, 10 million and you're at the down like 30, 30, 40%, which is three to $4 million. You know, not there yet, but if you if you just want to own one or two mobile homes, I'd recommend just tenant owned homes and buy something turnkey where the value adds very minimal and nominal, and you just collect the cash the cash flow and then benefit off the tax benefits of mobile home parks. Um, if you want to, um, I, I wouldn't recommend the park owned home model at least keeping it long term. Like honestly, if you want to do the park owned home model, it's fine, but Keep in mind your edge strategy is most likely to be flipping it to a uh, a larger operator, a larger syndicator, and you can just get you know make flip it to them. So make your profit off the fix and flip, I call it, or you could sell it to them and then retain some equity in the deal, which is very common as well. And then you're now free of the management. So I think that model is pretty sustainable. So like I say, I rinse and repeat my park right where I own it for like maybe two years. I do phase one, I sell it to a um, a syndicator, a large syndicator, and I retain some equity in the deal as a limited partner. And then they take it through phase two, three, and four. So I still benefit in the upside while having to do the work, right? Prove the model, buy it right, and then retain some equity in the deal with the syndicator, right? That's one, that's probably preferable option because um, you can still get the equity and they do all the work and they have all the systems in place. Or I just can fix and flip it, get the money, and then move on, right? And rinse and repeat. So I can do that like, you know, one of these parks every two years. Right? I can just repeat my process I'm doing on my Alabama park uh, for two years, you know, sell it, and then repeat the process. Um, or if I were to buy one, I would want like a tenant-owned home model and then be in a really great market. You know, honestly, I'd, I'd probably want it in California where I'm at so that I can be able to drive to it on a quarterly basis because, you know, I'm in California, I can make it right there. My park's in Alabama. It's a lot more time and effort to like fly to Alabama you know, once a quarter, you know, I can't afford that, um, you know, time-wise, you know, taking time off and whatnot. Um, so I would want it, you know, somewhere more local where I would drive. So if I did do mobile home parks again, um, you know, after exiting my current mobile home park, um, I would want it in California and somewhere that I can drive, right? So between Northern California, Southern California, in that range, I would love to be able to drive to it so I can see it on a quarterly basis and, you know, just be there available if, if um, you know, I'm needed to be more hands-on, right? So that's what I would do um, for apartments. Um, I don't necessarily need it to be in, you know, California, you know, hopefully I hope to build a large enough portfolio in Oklahoma and then eventually come back to California and, and buy some apartments in California because obviously I know the area very well, whether it's in Southern California, Northern California, you know, I know all the markets pretty decently and it's nice to be able to drive to it or even live in my own apartment complex, right? Like if I owned an apartment complex in Southern California, I could house hack my apartment complex, you know, live in one unit and rent out the rest and then hire a property manager still and just pretend that I don't own it, right? So no one knows that's me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like that. Um, apartments is definitely a great place to start, I'd say. Uh, more scalable, especially if you're working full time. So I think for me, while I'm working full time, I don't want to dive into doing like five to 10 year flip uh, cash out refinance to mobile parks. I'd rather just do a one to two year fix and flip and then fix it, uh, flip it for a profit or retain some equity in the deal with a large operator. Or uh, when I save enough money, I just want to buy like a turnkey mobile home park. I'll pay top dollar for it. Have it be more passive, make some cash flow day one, mostly tenant owned homes and have it in California or maybe Vegas where I just can drive to it, right? Or Arizona where I just can like drive to it and it's not too cumbersome to drive over there and 
you know, maybe I'm retired from my W2 by then, so I'll have more time to do that. So overall, hopefully you found some value of me kind of giving my thoughts on apartments versus mobile parks, kind of the pros and cons of each and kind of my mindset of what I would do uh, moving forward based on my experience of both. Hope to see you in the next part. Thank you.